Third, before we got into the body of the sales copy, I want to talk about the features and versus benefits uh, and do a little roundup on the features, you know, what a feature is versus what a, versus what a benefit is. Um, so the biggest general rule with, a, with what a benefit is, you have to ask yourself, what's in it for me? A classic example is a deluxe auto washer uh, reduces water use. And the benefit to that is that you save money. So the feature is that part of it that actually, um, it, you know, it's a part of things like, for example, brakes on a car. That's a feature. The benefit is that you're not going to hit things. So um, a feature might be wash, wax, rinse, all with the same unit. Again, the benefit is that it's convenient, uh, easy to use, and you save countless hours every month because those, all those features are integrated into one thing. So you have to ask yourself with every element of your copy, what is in it for me when it comes to that feature? What is in it for me with each element of the product? Even when you're looking at an ebook, the table of contents, what's in it for me in each part of those? And the benefits actually segue into the most important and the first element of sales copy. And the first element of sales copy is your headline. Your headline is the most important part of sales copy. In fact, I also want to mention that most you know, sales copy gurus mention that you have to do um, you know, 50% of your work on your headline and 50% on the rest of the copy. So writing 20, 40 headlines, 50 headlines is not unusual because you ever heard the old saying that uh, uh, don't judge a book by its cover? Well, the fact of the matter is that we all do. And so when you, people land on this site, they're going to make a 10 second or less decision whether your site has the answer to the problem they were searching for. And so we want to make sure that that site actually answers or sounds like the answer to uh, the problem right there on the page. So if possible, we want to include the highest potential keywords or phrases from your research um, or the word that you want to rank for. Um, we also want to include the top number one and possibly the number two benefit uh, within that. Another great idea as well is to actually include measurable things. Anytime you can measure something, 15 minutes, um, you know, uh, 15 ways of doing something, 1,500 pages worth of data, you know, hours worth of video, minutes worth of audio, anything that you can do to really show that, uh, you know, the better it'll get. So, um, first example we have here is uh, in solving the problem type headlines is yes, you can have a healthy body even if you hate exercise. Um, so the other beautiful thing about a benefit-filled headline is it often makes a dramatic promise that it's going to deliver on somewhere in the sales copy. So is excessive clutter making your home feel more like a war zone than a safe haven, filling you with anxiety and making it impossible to relax? That's the type of headline that's actually not only, you know, bringing out those emotions, but it's also kind of alluding to the benefits of actually solving that problem. So, um, sub-headlines, um, you know, it's on another element. It's the second part of the copy. First, we have the headline that captures their attention. The subhead often, you know, communicates the second or third most important benefit about your product. Um, you know. For example, you know, become an unstoppable negotiator and get what you want, when you want it, the way you want it from just about anybody. It's important to also include power words. Um, you know, for example, the word free, sale, easy, quick, guaranteed, bargain, proven. Um, you know, these kind of words, you know, they just take things that are normal and excite them. Um, any way that you can, you know, create a snowball effect. Every time you can add something dramatic to your copy like that, um, power words are definitely going to do that for you. So, um, so another ex few examples we've got here. I'll teach you how to quickly and easily get all the credit you've ever wanted, 100% guaranteed, or I pay you $50 for wasting your time. Uh, yet another dramatic promise. These are the kind of headlines that uh, that produce those kind of results. Um, producing or sorry, including tangible, specific details on the amounts themselves. Um, snowball with your the income with your uh, with the same step by step strategies that I use to earn two hundred and thirteen thousand seven hundred and five dollars. Um, another thing to note too, actually, when you're including these kind of numbers and specifics, it's actually a good idea to get right down to the penny because it sounds more believable. It sounds more, you know 
like it actually came from a real place. Um, and it's also important that you actually go out and look for that kind of data and actually look for the, that kind of information. I mean, uh, you know, actually do the calculations and try and figure out, you know, how much money would they save, earn, lose, gain by using the product itself or service. Um, you know, how much would it cost to get an equal or similar service somewhere else? Um, you know, also, you know, you can start with words like learn, how to, why, discover, increase, decrease, stop, reduce. Um, and it's important to really speak to the emotions. People buy things for emotional, not rational reasons. So we need to include those, those type of uh, emotions. And it's also important to uh, make your headline sound like an article and not like something for sale. Remember that your headline's job is not to sell your product. That's the job of the entire piece of copy. Your headline's job is to convince people that this web page has the answer to the problem that they have. So, discover the secret wedding gown perfection that most beautiful brides in the world pass on to their friends. Um, you know, something like that. Now, the next element of copy, after you've got yourself an impressive headline that looks like it's going to attract visitors, people are going to stop at that site and go, wow, that's what I'm looking for. The next part is to start talking about the problem and actually start, I mean, the prob discussing the problem actually does a few things. First of all, it's actually going to uh, relate to the reader and make sure that they, yeah, they've gotten to the right website. This is definitely the site that solves that problem. Um, and it also starts to sort of twist that, you know, that knife a little bit and really make them think for a second, wow, this is the, uh, you know, this problem is actually bigger than I realized, or maybe this could get worse, or maybe, you know, maybe this is actually a problem that, uh, that I need to investigate a little more. Um, the example we have here, Dear friend, you've probably been overcharged many times this year without even knowing it. Um, studies show that 88% of all buyers pay too much for their new car, and if you lease, you're even worse off. Um, it's really a good idea to try and find different ways to explain that. And so um, it's really about the three Ps, the pain, the problem, and the predicament that they're in. Um, the pain they're facing, the problem itself, and the predicament. Uh, I mean, the best way to describe that is with uh, words that are emotional, like, you know, I bet you're furious about. Aren't you frustrated that? Does it make you mad when you think about, aren't you paralyzed at the thought of solving this? Does it beat up your ego? Um, you know, do you fear X, Y, and Z? Um, are you jealous of other people who seem to be able to solve this problem? Does it fill you full of hatred thinking about it? Are you annoyed about this? Does it keep you up until 3 o'clock in the morning thinking about it? Are you confused, scared, unsure how to solve this specific problem? Um, these are a lot of things that sort of really make people start to realize the emotions they've already gone through. Or maybe these are the emotions that they're yet to face based on uh, solving this specific problem, whether it's getting a tune-up to the car or whether it's, uh, you know, solving their back pain and before they realize this could be a bigger problem if they don't take care of it. So we need to also uh, start to get into why hasn't, the, I mean, why isn't the problem solved? What else have you tried? First of all, no other so-called viral ebook solution that I've ever seen offers this. 74% uh, of people surveyed told me these four email chores are wasting anywhere from 15 to 40 hours every week. If you see, this is another example where we're showing them just how much pain they're going through with their current solution or their current way of doing things. And remember, I mean, every single product out there has some kind of a problem that the entire audience is facing. I mean, before accounting software was invented, it was the pencil. The pencil was, you know, the pain, the hard thing to work through, um, you know, the cramping hand, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know. Another example here, uh, your toddler's temper tantrum uh, problem. I mean, reminding somebody that, you know, the second temper tantrum of the day shows no signs of stopping. Supersonic, ear-shattering, teeth-jarring screams pierce the ear. Your first instinct is to run away and join the circus. But, of course, this isn't the real option. Um, there must be a better way. And this kind of problem really segues into, okay, yeah, I've heard enough about the problem. All right. This is uh, rough, but who is this guy? Who is telling me that he knows the problem that I'm facing? Why does he understand? And so this is the next element of sales copy, establish your credibility. All right? So there's some general rules to go by. That we want to make sure this is easy to verify. Um, some people actually include contact information, but, uh, you know, um, 
actually leaving, you know, using testimonials, for example, like the ones we've got here. Mailu saved me thousands of hours representing um, thousands of dollars that I have been able to make in, you know, sales in excess of 25000 because of it, my newsletters. They all run by themselves. Or uh, one of the best features of Mailoop is how easy it is to operate. And you notice they've got the 50% increase. These testimonials come from asking your customers the right questions. You have to ask your customers, so how much time did my product save you? How much money did your, my product save you? And there's no such thing as a product that can't have some kind of measurable benefit. Like, uh, you know, you can even ask your customers on a scale of 1 to 10, how much better was that next skiing trip, um, you know, after reading my book on how to ski, um, you know, at the best ski lodges for next to no money. I mean, you can just easily put those pieces together. You can measure just about anything. And they sound so much more, be uh, you know, so much better than any other way. And the nice thing is that when you put those measurables in there and you've asked your customers the right questions, these aren't testimonials that you've manufactured. These are exactly what your customers came back with based on the expert questions that you asked them. So another method of building credibility um, is to mention your uh, qualifications. So how long have you been doing this for? Um, you know, in my 22 years of experience as a mechanic, I've seen all the scams that dishonest service shops pull on unsuspected car owners. Um, you might even want to mention what you did uh, for those 22 years as a mechanic. What types of common problems you faced? What types of people that you dealt with that are always in the same situation over and over and over again? I mean, just giving that personal testimonial makes a huge difference. And uh, here's another good example here. As a both registered nurse RN and a certified financial analyst, I can help you ensure that you don't end up sick and broke after your hospital stay. Wow. There's a person whose credibility is on the line. She's a nurse. She's a financial analyst. She knows all about money and she knows all about healthcare. Um, sounds like a type of person I'd like to do business with. They know exactly the area that I'm struggling with. So here's an example of an inventor. It took me two years to come up with the prototype that worked, another two years of tweaking to make sure it worked perfectly. If you're writing an ebook or even if you're hiring somebody to write it, maybe mention how many hours it took them to write that book or how many hours it took you to research this area. Um, you know, or how many um, websites that you had to visit, how many people did you have to talk to in an interview. Um, you know, all those kind of things contribute to the credibility of how much knowledge and passion and information that you have and why you're qualified to talk to this person about this topic. Um, you know, uh, getting interviews or testimonials from other people that you've worked with, um, respected associates. For six years, I produced the in-house webinars for Cisco Systems and maybe even getting them to, uh, um, to back you up on that somehow. Um, getting a membership to the Better Business Bureau and mentioning that, mem mentioning that you've got an outstanding membership with them. Um, one of my favorite ways to build credibility without any testimonials at all um, is to quote a trusted authority. Um, a recent spyware website once said 84% of you know, respondents reported they were victims of spyware. Now, some site selling spyware software, you might not have believed that that was actually true. But then they said below, they said, quote, USA Today, May 2005. Here's another example here. Um, Want to save $3,000? According to, uh, to a January 2007 study by the Association of American Auto Insurers, it costs the average car owner $7,359 per year to own, maintain, and drive a car based on a mid-sized sedan. And then they can quote the actual source and the date and everything. I mean, you can easily see how quoting those relevant sources can make a huge difference. So tell a story that paints the picture of the problem solved It's the next part of the sales copy. Um, I like to call this area the dramatic promise. Um, imagine the ultimate win. How would you feel if? How would you like X? So here's our example. So think about this. This is like the ultimate answer. I mean, the ultimate picture. Remind them of those visual benefits. Make it completely, you know, visual to the customer that that's what life is going to be like once they've had your product, they've experienced the results that you're promising, and they're living that new life that your product's going to give them. Even the simplest products. Okay, so after we've established those visual benefits to the customer of just what life is like with our product, we need to identify with the reader and say, believe me, I know how you feel. After, 
you know, three kids with four years. I didn't think I'd ever, uh, you know, get a full night's sleep again. The bags under my eyes went down to my chin. You know, relating to the reader and saying, believe me, I know how you feel. I had that problem. I know what the benefit's like. I'm not just promising some crazy answer or some, you know, huge benefit that I can't relate to. I've had this happen myself. I was afraid to step out on the dance floor, afraid I'd trip all over my feet or stomp my partners. I was afraid to relive that humiliating high school dance where the other kids started imitating me, but I didn't even realize it. So, I mean, that's a classic example of relating to the reader and, you know, explaining that. You want to discuss your USP if you have one. That's the unique sales proposition. What separates you from the competition? You know, like uh, Domino's Pizza, there's got to be 200 shops in LA, but Domino's Pizza guarantees 30 minutes delivery or it's free. Um, so, you know, FedEx gets it there overnight. They've separated themselves from the competition. This is also the section where we can easily do that um, and discuss the solution that you found and how well it worked for you. So the next section here is to provide an overview of your, uh, of your solution itself. What we want to do is actually describe what we're going to include and what we're proposing. This is our overview of one of our products here um, where you can easily email new subscribers a welcome message, send a new subscriber, or send new subscribers a free copy of your latest newsletter, add people. These are just going through the overall benefits of the product and explaining how, it, how it's going to benefit you and how it works. So this also ties into after you've actually explained how you plan to solve the problem, ebook, video, um, we want to start getting into the, the benefits and tying the features and benefits together. Double your water skiing time uh, so you can take everybody out. Slash your fuel bills in half with a couple of quick fixes that anybody can do. Tow twice the load without bogging down. These are what you get out of it. Every product has something that you get out of it. And putting these in bullet form and just be, making it skimmable so people can skim through everything they're going to get out of actually buying your product um, is an invaluable thing. The more you can sort of go through every you know, impressive, juicy detail about what you're going to get out of buying this product, the better. Um, you know, slash your fuel bills in half. Put a $20, you know, uh, twenty dollars into your pocket uh, for this weekend extra just by buying this. So after we've got all the benefits, people know how juicy this is, people know how wonderful this is, they know what they're going to get out of buying this product, they know all the benefits, they know the problems they're, that they faced, it's time to start actually offering this for sale and start testing the waters. Some people even actually put a buy now button early in the copy and let people uh, have the option of buying it early. So. Um, I've got an example here from the MailLoop website um, where we're describing the value of the product itself. So given that most people need at least four to five uh, series to get started, this is a value of $1,440 per year. And this is using it as an, an example of a uh, outsourced typical uh, autoresponder series software. However, today for the first time ever, we're publicly releasing the complete uh, completely updated MailLoop 2007, um, basically just describing the value itself of that product um, and just also trying to think of any other way that you could solve this problem. I mean, the more value you can build, the better. So before we get into the actual price, we're going to pile on the bonuses. Uh, you see this in infomercials all the time and, you know, I'm a lot of, sure a lot of people, uh, you know, find it humorous. Um, so here's a classic example here. Enjoy a free 30-day trial of the membership in my private club for eBay entrepreneurs and get instant answers to uh, your eBay questions. Selling for $97, yours free. We're going to include that with one of the products. I mean, can you believe that they're going to take something that's worth $100 and add that completely free if you buy this package? So uh, in this example again here too, we've got to make sure that you can swiftly move past any challenges you may face in starting and growing your eBay business. Um, so just really restating the value of and the benefits behind the what's in it for me. Why do I want a membership to this forum? What's, what's that going to do for me? Well, here's all the things it's going to do for you. You can ask questions like, I've got an idea for a product. And you can see somebody relating to this and going through this and going, yeah, I got a question like that. 
I wonder if I can sell my, you know, my my cousin's hairspray. Will that work? Or, you know, can I can I sell that zit cream on there on eBay? Um, so you can think of you can see a lot of people relating to these questions. You can easily um, put something together around you know what common things somebody could do with that product or that bonus. I mean, sometimes a bonus is just a simple report, and you know I really like to use simple reports that are also sort of building on uh, the unsureness or the you know the questions that are building up in the back of somebody's head about this product, like the top 47 reason or mistakes most new people make when trying to do X or you know the top things people aren't sure about or the top seven dangers most people face when trying to um, you know fix their own brakes or adjust the uh, motor on their outboard uh, boat you know I mean those kind of things more examples here plus you'll also get uh, access to our workshops access to uh, a network with like-minded people I mean, really, you can just see the value building and building and building on this. Do nothing but implement the easy-to-follow stealth strategies you'll learn uh, in the club, and you'll reap the rewards. Again, it's just restating that value. Even the $97 product is clearly worth more than $97. But it's important to also note that the product should stand on its own. So, I mean, the benefits of those other bonuses are great, but the product itself, I mean, should still solve their problem in that. So use a strong guarantee this is the next element of the sales copy uh, elements here um, so a strong guarantee the longer the better the main premise or the main reason we offer a guarantee in the first place is that so we can take the risk completely away we want them to feel like there's no reason why they shouldn't buy this product because they're going to be completely and totally satisfied and they'll never need to return it, but they can if they wanted to. So the other thing is we've also statistically shown that by taking the risk completely away for longer time periods, um, the refund drops dramatically. Uh, you'll see on some of our products we've had over a year. So here's our example here. If you're not completely satisfied that this is the best coffee filter you've ever used. Not in, if you're not enjoying coffee that's richer, smoother, full-bodied than you've ever tasted, please send back uh, your coffee genie within 90 days or com uh, for a complete refund of your $47.19. So I really want to point out 90 days, three whole months, and you can say that right in your copy. Yeah, three whole months that you're going to have. Um, but please keep the ceramic flavor lock canister as our gift from us and I mean also look at these words richer smoother I mean painting that mental picture so strong guarantee that says you're gonna get every benefit we've promised here and you have nothing to lose so the next and the last and most important element of the copy and believe me this has to be thoroughly tested is to ask for the order the ask for the order section has to be done perfectly I mean the biggest test of your ask for the order section is, I mean, to ask a kid or somebody who doesn't know your copy to, to try and find the place where you order. It should be dead simple. Um, it has to include a good call to action that gives the, the reader or the viewer exactly what they need to know to buy the product. So a classic example is download the, uh, the product right now. Uh, download this ebook or this audio package in my seven free bonuses. Pick up the phone and instantly order this. Click here to get this. Sub click here to subscribe. Click here to ship me. Uh, click here to enter in my address. Click here to send me, email me, etc. The important thing is to not use words that will stop people dead in their tracks. We're trained from a young age, believe it or not, we are trained that certain words are going to lead to a sale. Somebody's going to try and take our money. And so we need to make sure that we don't use those words. Classic words like that are buy, difficult, obligation, wrong, failure, decision. We don't want them to make a decision. They just simply need to download or simply need to subscribe. We don't want to mention cost. We don't want to mention selling or taxes, um, you know, worry, you know, any of those kind of words. Liability. Um, those are the kind of words that can kill a sale quite quickly. All we want to mention, we've already mentioned the price and the value of that price. Now we just want to get them to act on a word like download or 
ship this to me or click here to fill out your address so we can get this to the right place. The other important thing about asking for the order is to assume the sale. Assume that they want the product all the way through the copy. So because they're looking for a solution already, we can just simply say, when you're ready to purchase, click here. Or, um, you know, we know you're going to enjoy the following benefit because we can assume right away that they are going to enjoy those benefits. So don't forget the PS. So the last piece of the sales copy, the, the single last element before we've completed all the elements that sales copy, um, you know, comes together with, um, is the PS itself. Now the important point, the reason we have a PS, because I know a lot of people that I've spoken to have said, well, I don't really want to include that. The thing is, the PS restates the big benefit behind the product. Um, you know, people keep telling me they can't believe how beautifully clean Groutmaster got their grungy shower stall or lime cake tub. Um, it restates the benefit and it also restates the problem because remember by the time they've gotten down the copy they've read all the rosy pictures of how beautiful life's going to be and the benefits and all the great things that are going to come from this product they've already had a time you know in a piece of copy to forget about the big scary problem in the beginning so we need to restate those grungy showers and those lime caked tubs we need to restate the um, you know, the high traffic kitchen floors that are four shades darker right now. Um, so this stuff's so powerful, people actually ask me if it's toxic. After all, they've already tried everything else, including the harshest chemicals around. Um, so, I mean, I just want to reassure you that it's natural and all that other stuff there. Um, biodegradable cleaning formula, you can dump it down the drain, all that kind of thing. Um, green alternatives to traditional grout cleaners. The, the whole point, again, is just to restate the benefits they might have missed, the important points, and make sure that they haven't forgotten that they are still facing that problem. Remember that, uh, you know, when you leave this website, uh, if you haven't gathered all my, you know, juicy tips, you may still be facing a two-year-old, um, you know, who's going to have yet another temper tantrum, you know, maybe in an hour, maybe tomorrow, uh, or your back is still going to be in pain and you won't have you know, made any progress towards that goal. Um, so it's important to take a, uh, and convince them to take action, explain how important it is to take action uh, in order to get that benefit. So we've got all those important elements there. We're now going to move into the formatting. So I've got this example. It's not real sales copy, um, but it does provide some ex excellent examples of um, formatting and how traditional sales copy should look. First of all, the headline, as you can tell on this page, is the most important thing here. It's got numbers, it's got power words, and it's got some things that have been outlined in red so that you can clearly see that that's one of the most important things that we want to enunciate here. The, the great thing about this copy is it's got lots of white space around things. So everything isn't bunched together. It's really easy to just quickly glance at it and know right away that my 20, the top search phrase that I was searching for is right there. There's power words in there that make things a little more exciting. The headline's the most important element on this page. The graphic is not that exciting. The, uh, and the second most exciting thing on this page is our opt-in with that free report over there that says opt-in title. What it really should say, though, is the top 47 things that you forgot to do this winter or, uh, you know, the top 19 things that most people forget when they go off to do ABC. Um, those are the kind of things that are going to set us up for a sale. But anyway, so scrolling down here, you can see the deer target audience and, uh, and that sort of thing. Lots and lots of white space. Now, we've got a little warning box. Do not purchase things unless they meet the following five criteria. So, again, that's building on the problem section there. Those are the five criteria, the five things you may have tried before. You'll probably realize, or your visitor will probably realize a few things in that list that they've, you know, had to deal with before. So anyway, um, you've got the credibility section. You can see some spots, you know, like for example here, we've got my name is Joan, last 15 years I've been studying or suffering from this and doing this. What we're doing with the bolding and italicizing there, um, especially with the bold, is 
enunciating. In copy, it's really bland, you know, and, you know, the way eyeballs work, of course, um, you know, when you're reading just regular words on a sheet of paper, they can have different meanings depending on what part of the copy you enunciate with. So your bold is kind of like, your bold and your italics are both ways of enunciating words that you want to say with a bit more uh, authority. So, um, you know, for 15 years I've been suffering bold with this, or I've had an immense amount of pain doing this. Um, so you got to really develop your own personal style when it comes to enunciating and stuff like that. But I mean, those are really important things to to have there. Also, with the red, the important you know, if you would like to skyrocket this or eliminate this from your life, you need to dot dot dot. Um, and then there's the features and benefits list there. You can see how the red really brings out this is a really important point. And with your subheads, remember the headline's job, as I mentioned in the beginning, is to sell you on staying on the page because this has got the answer to your problem. The subheads are to sell you on the next two paragraphs. So a subhead should, convince, should basically relay the benefits of the next few paragraphs because some people aren't going to actually read you know, the entire copy verbatim, every piece of it. They're just going to skim through the important elements that matter to them. They're, I mean, quite often when people are searching for something, there's something specific that they're really looking for. And so they're going to skim your copy looking to see if it has that. And so as they're skimming, the subheads not only sell them on those next two paragraphs or three paragraphs, um, they also sort of give them an idea of what that section of the copy is about. So really important that the subheads aren't just, you know, five second afterthoughts, but they're almost as important as the headline itself in keeping people scrolling through. Because if we don't get them down to the bottom where the order is going to be processed there, um, you know, it's quite clear that we're not going to get them to the sale. So, um, and so you can see the, the bullets and the, uh, the way we've got the um, lots and lots of white space throughout the copy there and warnings and check boxes and such. The more white space and the more organized things are, um, the better it is to read. So that's a classic example of how that copy would look if it was completely thrown together. The other thing too, we've got some violators in here which are big things that sort of like the 100% satisfaction guaranteed little graphic or the you know download now button there um, that really follow that process I was discussing earlier with the close that we have to use words like you know downloaded in seconds or um, or something like that. It's not actually a purchase or a buy now, but it's a download now. And that concludes the basics, basic elements of sales copy.